Well, 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 it's Saturday the 13th of May, and this is episode 2317 of 301 Permanently Moved Online, a personal podcast 301 seconds in length, written, recorded, and edited by me at the JMO. <laughs> I've reached the point in my book planning for The Web Was a Side Quest where I need to sketch out what happened to culture after Dungeons & Dragons fused with computing. I already discussed the creation of and navigation by narrative inside of Techno Social Systems in episode 2313, but this line of thinking is only obvious in hindsight. To understand the trajectory of this transformation, we need to travel back to the late 70s and 1980s. A key part of this story are Paragraph Games, better known in the US as Choose Your Own Adventure Books, and in the UK, the Fighting Fantasy series by Steve Jackson and Ian Livingston. Game books are the progeny of the explosion of creativity and world exploration that happened after D&D arrived. They didn't invent the idea, but they did popularise it. These books introduce concepts like branching narratives, non-linear storytelling, and systemic world exploration to a generation. One that will go on to interact with computing environments as they grew up during the personal computing revolution. As someone who lived through this period, it's worth mentioning that these books weren't just niche items for dedicated players. They were bestsellers. Combined, both series had sold over 270 million copies lifetime. In March of 1983, the one, two, and three spots in the UK Sunday Times bestseller lists were held by fighting fantasy titles. They permeated popular culture to such an extent that you didn't even need to play them to understand what they were about. Someone's brother or sister of a friend at school had a copy. The idea of a book where you had to keep turning the pages backward and forward to find your way through the story was just something that we all ambiently understood. The history of game books is one of simultaneous invention, an idea whose time had come for culture. In the UK, an editor for Penguin approached Jackson and Livingston about writing a book on the D&D phenomenon. Their response, why can't we write a book that allows you to experience what it is to roleplay? In the US, the traditional story is that Edward Packard conceived to choose your own adventure books in 1969. One evening, Packard asked his daughters to decide the next step in a bedtime story. They both said different things, and the idea of branching storybooks were born. In 1970, he set out to find a publisher to run with the idea, which resulted, finally, in 1975, with the publication of the first Choose Your Own Adventure game book, The Adventures of You on Sugarcane Island, a modest 6,000 copy print run that went on to launch the fourth best-selling children's book series of all time. But as always, the story is more complicated. Game scholar James Ryan discovered recently the 1930 publication of Consider the Consequences by Doris Webster and Mary Alden Hopkins, a romance novel with 43 alternate endings that let the reader decide the fate of the book's protagonist, Helen Rogers. Game books and their logic of interactive branching narratives, decision making within systems, all provided the mental grammars required to understand the concept of hypertext, a truly radical idea that had been conceived of by the computer scientist Ted Nelson 20 years earlier in 1963. You'd think me tempted to reiterate at this point that game books help prime a generation for the navigation of digital worlds, but I won't. Instead, let's consider another manifestation of interactive branching narratives, a patent that was granted to Dr. Michael J. Freeman in 1982, titled The Verbally Interactive Telephone Interrogation System with Selectable Variable Decision Tree. First filed in 1979, it describes what we now recognise as the branching phone tree menu system. Conceived of and patented well after the invention of both D&D and gamebooks, phone trees were the public's first introduction to systemic branching navigation through computational worlds. This recent historical period post D&D shows that society was becoming more and more comfortable with complex, user-driven systems. The mental map needed to navigate a gamebook isn't so different from the mental architecture required to navigate a phone tree menu. Phone tree systems are still known today as automated attendants. The question we must ask ourselves, however, is who are the attendants that were being automated? Before the conceptual and technical leaps required to make self-navigation possible, we were attended to and guided through the complexity of telephone systems by expert navigators. At the very dawn of this technology, amongst the copper wires and electrical signals of the vast techno-social system were people. These hello girls, or more formally, telephonists, were young women like my great nana. They worked inside telephone exchanges, connecting callers physically to their destination with cables. Elsewhere in my notes for the book, I've begun to think of this workforce of women as the metaverse's first co-pilots. 
roles that had already largely been automated away by the 1930s due to advancements in mechanical telephone switching technology. So that's a quick sketch of just one of the stories about what happened after worlds arrived in culture. If you enjoyed this episode, press 1. To subscribe, press 2. To hear this podcast again, press 3. Or visit us at thejmo.net slash support to subscribe from just £5 a month.